All right, so I'm back out in the garage today, and I had a few questions um, after a few of my other videos uh, around the Rapid Change ATC, and just some things that people were asking. I thought I would do kind of my initial impressions on the Rapid Change ATC. I've had it for um, a week and a half now. Um, I've got a few actual jobs done. I've got a half dozen test jobs done, and probably a hundred and and some odd bit changes just in testing and setup. Um, and I've had to set it up a, a twice now. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so I feel that I can give uh, some initial impressions and, like I said, answer some of the questions that people had. So one of the um, questions that I see come up quite often, uh, both in my videos I was asked at least two or three times, and um, on the forum and stuff, is just around cross-threading. Uh, cross um, so one of the things that uh, the guys over at Rapid Change have done a, a good job of is maybe not um, maybe not getting the message out there, but they've definitely done a good job of testing, is making sure that the system doesn't cross-thread. Um, and because everything is, you know, when you try to, to hand tighten a nut, sometimes you can get it on there funny, but, you know, we're just humans. We do things, you know, weird with our hands. And I'm sure to a point, if you installed your Rapid Change ATC uh, cockeyed, like if it was twisted or uh, cammed out, you could probably cause yourself some grief. Uh, but as long as everything is relatively straight, and I, I say relatively because there's a big spring in here, when the spindle comes down to engage the nut, if you're off by a little bit, the nut is able to... Let me just zoom in a little bit here. And because the spindle is coming straight down, um, there's not really any opportunity for cross-threading. So like I said, I've, I've done 100 loads and unloads, at least, if not a few more now. Um, and I've never had any issue with binding, um, it threading on funny, or not threading at all, that sort of stuff. So, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say it can't happen. I'm sure there are some uh, installation uh, setups that could cause it to happen uh, but I definitely the way I have it set up is not as typical as most which would be on their flat spoil board attached to um, a planar surface with the machine um, and mine loads just fine so I don't I don't see any issues with cross threading I don't notice any wear on the threads on the spindle or the the nuts that I'm using um, so yeah I I don't want to say it's, you know, not a thing, uh, but I, I definitely haven't seen it. And I know the guys over at Rapid Change have done an amazing job testing it uh, to make sure that it doesn't happen. So between the, uh, you know, the way that the spindle engages with the nut, the way that the nuts are held in the dispensers and then the spring um, just takes a lot of that uh, possible issue out, um, out of the equation. So. Uh, like I said, cross threading came up a few times. I just wanted to touch on that and that it's not not a thing. Um, some people were asking around the collets and nuts. So this is one area I would say don't don't cheap out. Uh, I bought some cheap. Well, they actually weren't. They were they were reasonable collets, but they were the one eighth inch collets that I got um, allowed the bit to slip out freely. So um, you'd load a bit and it would you know, with minimal pressure, again, the, the collet should hold the bit reasonably well. And then once it's tightened, it should really be snug. Um, but the collets I got um, from Amazon, I can't remember the company, I'll link to the ones that I'm using and having good luck with. Uh, UXL um, the, is the nuts and uh, the collets that I've been using both eighth inch and quarter inch. And they've been really good. Um, this other brand, they, they claimed they were precision and the quarter inch ones did work well, but the eighth inch ones were, were pretty useless. The bits just fell out. Um, as soon as you'd put them uh, down uh, into the cassette or the magazine, it would just fall through, uh, which is, which is no good. Um, so yeah, uh, the collets and nuts, A, calculate that into the cost of ownership. They, they aren't nothing. Um, in my case, I needed six nuts uh, plus a couple additional for manual tool changes if I want to do that. Um, and then you need collets to fill those uh, depending on your bits and stuff. So take that into account. They're not, they're not crazy expensive, but it does add 
you know, a hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars um, to populate, you know, at whatever these were twenty four dollars for a two pack um, for the nuts, and then the collets I think were seventeen eighteen dollars for a two pack. So you know, it does add up. So keep that in mind that you do need to buy uh, some collets and nuts, and um, don't buy the cheapest ones because the some of the nuts are off balance and some of the collets don't hold the bits very well. So keep that in mind that you do need a good set um, and you want to do a bit of testing just to make sure that the uh, the bits are being held reasonably tight in the collet to avoid any problems, um, like bits slipping out or bits falling out when it's loading and unloading. One of the other questions that I had um, was around the models, sorry, the models and the differences between them. Uh, so if you go to Rapid Change's website right now, they have three, they have a bunch of different um, nut sizes. So ER11, ER16, ER20, uh, I think ER25. Um, so that's one of the things you have to pick and that's dependent on your spindle. So obviously uh, whatever spindle you have, um, you know, make sure you pick the appropriate uh, magazine for that. My understanding is if you buy an ER11 now, you can just replace these rings. You can just buy uh, a set of the new rings for ER up to ER20. Um, so if you do get an ER11 today and you think you might upgrade your spindle later, you are good to go up to ER20. If you were to go to an ER25, um, I believe there are physical differences in the magazine and it probably won't work. Uh, but rest assured that if you have a ER11 today, you do have a bit of an upgrade path. So that's kind of nice. The three models that they have then on the website um, is the basic, the pro, and the premium. Um, and then you have the optional tool setter. So mine is uh, ER11 Pro with the tool setter add-on. So this is another $50 on top of the base price. So the tool setter is, is a nice little add-on that you know basically replaces my previously homemade um, printer clicky switch uh, touch probe. So this is now my TLS sensor. Um, so this is what I use now for, for that part, for uh, measuring tool length. So the tool setter you can add to, uh, to I believe, any of them, um, including the basic. Basic, I'm not sure about. I, I shouldn't speak to that. I'm not sure on the basic if you can do that. Um, but on the pro, you can add the tool setter, and on the premium, you can add the tool setter. The biggest difference between the pro and the premium is the dust hood. So you have a brake beam sensor here to test if the nut is unloaded and loaded properly, which is awesome. Um, and, but what you don't have is the dust hood that's auto that auto opens. So in my case, I have to manage the dust. I have to you know, be aware that the magazine, if it's dirty or whatever, clean it up, um, try to prevent dust from getting in there. My goal is to have a dust shoe that works with the system. Um, I don't quite have it sorted out yet what I'm going to do, uh, but that's my ultimate goal is to just have a dust boot that works with the system so I don't have to worry about the dust hood. So that's the biggest difference between the pro and the premium is just that, that dust hood. Um, the pro includes um, the brake beam sensor. So like I said, the, the brake beam sensor is here, uh, basically shoots a beam between here and here to check if the spindle has unloaded the nut properly um, and spun the nut on properly. So after a unload and reload, make sure that that's done. On the basic, it's, it's as it sounds, it's basic. It doesn't have the brake beam sensor, um, doesn't have a lot of smarts. It's just the magazine and access to the macros um, to set it up. So my understanding from Dawn is basically the macros won't allow you to automate that tool change without going in and mucking with them. So if you had a basic and you loaded tool one, it's going to come up and it's there's going to be a resume message on the screen um, and have you confirm that the bit loaded and that it can resume. Um, because it doesn't have an automated way to check, um, they're relying on somebody physically to check that uh, before it continues. So just be aware of that. The basic, <clears throat> you could come up with your own solutions for all of those things, 
uh, but the basic does require some manual intervention when doing a bit change to ensure that that bit did actually load uh, versus the pro and the premium can be fully automated for uh, for those bit changes. So, And then lastly is the location on the machine. So, um, so with the location, uh, I used to have this set um, down below. So this is a 2040 extrusion. I mounted it to the side of the machine um, in an effort to try and maximize my workspace. I'm not sure that I love it. I'll continue to run it this way, but I have actually prepped a file and my spoil board um, so that I could run it along the y-axis over here. Um, so I'm not, I'm not totally sure if this is the where it'll live. What I did run into uh, when it was lower was with stock here, basically this is um, three quarter inch MDF, with it here and it doing a bit change, it was hitting just barely, but the, you can see the bottom of this, of the x-axis slider came all the way down and it just barely touched, um, <laughs> barely touched the, uh, the material. So this is only three quarter inch material. Obviously if I had taller material or stock, I would have a problem. So um, I moved it up a little bit. So again, I just moved it up basically 20 millimeters. Gives me that extra bit of clearance. Um, but though, those are some of the things to think about when you're setting your uh, rapid change ATC up is just how you load stock, how you um, you know load jobs on your machine and where it's going to be out of the way the most. So like I said, I kind of thought that having it low down out of the way on the machine was going to be good. Uh, two things I found. One, the Z slider would hit the stock, and two, it just completely <laughs> would fill up with uh, dust and debris. Um, some of that's because I don't have a dust shoe on right now, uh, but some of it's just the nature of it. You're never going to collect all the dust, and with it really low like that, um, the dust can kind of just fall into it. So with it raised up a bit, uh, the dust doesn't have as easy a time getting in there. Um, and like I said, hopefully I'll have a dust uh, boot solution here soon. Um, yeah, so overall, I am really happy with the Rapid Change ATC. I've used it, like I said, on a few different jobs now, um, and I find it makes life pretty easy once you get your software and your machine all working properly. Um, and I'll talk to some of what I'm using on the software side um, in a later video. This one's probably getting a little bit long. Um, yeah, so I did have two two small issues or two resolvable issues when I first got it. One was something to do with my spindle specifically. Um, this is an 800 watt water cooled spindle and it has a really stubby shaft on it. Um, so when I went to do bit changes with the stock cap, the stock cap that comes on it is quite a bit thicker and it would prevent the spindle from fully engaging the nut and just couldn't spin on or spin off nuts. Um, so I reached out to Don um, from Rapid Change, and he got me the file um, within an hour, and I was able to model something up and print out a version that worked with my spindle. I don't imagine this is going to be an issue on too many people's uh, spindles or setups, uh, but it was an issue on mine and something that I had to fix. Uh, but with the support of the team, it was quite easy. And the other issue that I had was um, I believe they're going to fix this going forward, but on my tool setter, there's um, essentially a, this is the top cap, and then there's a six millimeter, uh, or maybe it's a quarter inch uh, shaft that then has a magnet on the end of it. And that magnet is being uh, pushed up by another magnet in the bottom. And then when the, when the tool comes and touches it, it trips the sensor. The issue I had was this top cap was a little bit too tight. So when I, when I tighten the screws down on this top cap, um, it caused this to basically sit in trip mode or just in between trip mode and not. Um, so I had to loosen the screws up a bit. I have since gone in there with a deburring tool and created more room, um, and now it's solid. But I was having an issue before where if I put any pressure on this top cap, um, if I was loading a job or working on my machine, and I put some pressure on this top cap, it would cause the sensor to trip. Um, so like I said, I had a deburring tool on the inside and cleaned it up, and it was good. Uh, so I did give Don um, that feedback as well, 
and they're going to look at the model and uh, and see about making a bit more allowance uh, just to prevent prevent that in the future. So other than those two things, the one being my spindle, um, I have really enjoyed using the ATC and uh, I've got more jobs to to come. So I'm looking forward to getting them on the machine and getting uh, getting them. <clears throat> so I'm looking forward to getting them on the machine and uh, getting them done. But yeah, those are my initial thoughts. Uh, like I said, this isn't a comprehensive review by any means, but um, just kind of my initial thoughts. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.